In this program, we are going to introduce you to three predators whose lives are almost dependent on one another. The lion, the black-backed jackal, the hyena. The first family you will meet is a sadly orphaned black back jackal litter of four pups. They have lost their mother due to unexplained circumstances and are left to fend for themselves. And although very young, it is likely that Mother Nature may provide. Black back jackals make their homes in shallow deserted ant bear holes where they are safe from predators and they do not wander very far from the lair. They are found in great numbers on about a third of the African continent and are both accomplished scavengers and hunters. Meanwhile, this young litter, being orphans, have to fight for their survival and are forced to venture beyond the safety of their lair in search of food. Scratching among the loose rocks, they hope to find small insects to eat they instinctively know where to search, often in the most unlikely places, like in the dung of larger animals. Someone they hope to meet is the dung beetle, who is not only food for our orphans, but also assists the jackals in separating the dung, making it easier to find other insects. Sadly, the dung they have found is old and dry, and therefore empty of any life. So, still very hungry and tired, they settle down to rest, making ready for the next day's hunt. Unbeknownst to our orphan family is the fact that it is often common among jackals for an adult to provide food to orphans should he chance upon them. With the full moon acting like a blanket, they spend a lonely and scary night, hoping that their luck will change. The next day, our little friends were happy to see an adult jackal near the lair, who they tried to follow. But being so small and weak, they could not catch up to him. Adult jackals are generally known as scavengers, but are also hunters and will hunt smaller prey, such as birds, rabbits, and mice. Being small themselves, no bigger than an ordinary dog, they will never take the chance of hunting big game like this hartebeest. With dangerous horns like these, it is wise to keep a safe distance. Other scavengers are the vultures who try to steal the jackal's food and have to be chased away. Black-backed jackals derive their name from the dark stripe that runs across their backs, ending at the tip of a beautiful bushy tail. Always on the lookout for an easy meal, the jackal in turn will patiently follow lions for hours, but always at a safe distance, hoping to snatch tidbits from the lion's kill. This group of lions, however, has no intention of hunting as yet and are happy to be just playing in the bush. So being a cunning animal, the jackal will not waste his time with the playful lions, but rather leave in search of easier pickings. He is alerted to the noise of a guinea fowl which he knows are often found at the water hole. They in turn are totally unaware of his presence and fall easy prey to this expert hunter. Fortunately for our young orphans, he remembers them and leaves food at the entrance to the lair, offering them a chance to satisfy their hunger and the opportunity to survive. 
later to fend for themselves and hopefully grow into adult jackals one day. Calling his brothers and sisters to this gift of food, the orphans attack this meal ravenously as they have not eaten for a while and do not know when they may eat again. It is a known fact that in the wild, only the strong will survive. Our second family is more fortunate. Their mother has provided them with a safe home. Hyenas live in much bigger burrows with many tunnels. Lots of families live together, therefore ensuring the safety of the clan, and there is always a family member on guard to protect the younger ones. So hyena cubs are free to sleep and play outdoors with complete safety, even to the extent that they will openly expose themselves. Hyenas are easily recognized by their short back legs and spotted coats. Newly born cubs, however, have no spots at all, and their coats are entirely black. As they grow older, their coats will lighten, leaving behind dark spots, a reminder of their days as pure black cubs. The newly born hyenas are fiercely protected by the rest of the clan and are seldom allowed to venture out of the den. But being naturally inquisitive, like all youngsters, our little friend ventures out to see what his brothers and sisters are up to. Being so closely guarded in his dark tunnel isn't always fun. This little exploration is, nonetheless, under the watchful eye of one of the clan members. An important point to remember is, although hyenas look like dogs, they are actually related to the cat family. Unlike other scavengers and predators, the hyena clan is ruled by a female rather than a male, and she is called the matriarch. Females are bigger and more powerful than the males, and her word is law. This is evident as this youngster scuttles off to the den at her command. When they are young, hyenas are very shy, but do not be fooled by this as hyenas have the most powerful jaws of all the predators. Those who are too young to go out hunting with the adults spend their days strengthening their powerful teeth and jaws on old bones and horns left over from numerous hunts. The very young spend their time strengthening their teeth on bits of wood and bark, which often get stuck between their teeth, which is very frustrating. Like the jackals, the ever-present vultures also keep an eye on the hyenas, hoping for tidbits that they may scavenge. Protection of the clan plays a very important role in the lives of our hyenas. As we all know, there is safety in numbers. This is obvious when the whole clan reacts to the sound of lions in the vicinity. The matriarch goes out to check on the lions to make certain they are not coming too close. Our little baby, meanwhile, is oblivious to the danger, secure in the knowledge that there is always protection at hand. Hyenas are found on about half of the African continent and are very territorial. So when lions enter their territory, they keep a watchful eye on them to make sure there is no danger. Like the jackal, they too will follow the lions in hope that they will find an easy meal. When the lions have made a kill, it is not unusual for a strong hyena clan to steal this from under their noses, which makes it obvious as to why they are mortal enemies. The giraffe is also very wary of lions, as they often fall prey to a group of lions on the hunt for food. It is not unusual for a pride of lions to bring down a giraffe several times their size. 
making their title Kings of the Jungle easily understandable. You are now meeting our third family and should know what a pride or group of lions looks like. From the males with their golden and black manes to the lionesses with their cubs, lions are very social animals and will spend their days grooming and playing with each other, unlike the cheetah and the leopard who are solitary at. Even while playing, they are always alert to potential danger, especially from hyenas who are known to snatch unprotected cubs from the pride. Lions live in most parts of Africa, except the dry desert regions. Lions prefer to stay in dense bush or grasslands where they are easily hidden from both their prey and their enemies. As you can see, all lions have a black tip at the end of their tails which serves as a beacon for the cubs to follow. They follow it wherever it may lead. Being social cats, unlike the cheetah and the leopard, lions travel in groups or prides. During the heat of the day, lions are often found basking in the sun, waiting for the temperature to cool down and saving their energy for the late afternoon when most of the animals come to the water holes to drink. When feeding, the males are always entitled to feed first. That is where the saying, the lion's share, comes from. The rest of the pride must wait patiently until the male has had his fill. Sometimes a member of the pride may become impatient and she is quickly shown who is boss. Although the lionesses do most of the hunting, the males will always be treated with the utmost respect as he is the protector of the pride. Once he has had his fill, the rest of the pride is entitled to their share. The stronger cubs will get to the carcass first and defend their territory aggressively as the rule of the bush dictates that only the strongest will live. In nature, there is a lesson to be learned from this. For any animal kingdom, only the strongest must survive, ensuring the ongoing strength of the pride. Even though their bellies are full and they have no intention to hunt, lions will sometimes get up to mischief and frighten other animals. The younger ones join in the fun as part of their education and often will do a mock charge, establishing their prowess. Zebra, minding their own business at the water hole, are still very wary of a lioness who is only coming to drink. Zebras instinctively know when lions have fed by their sagging tummies, but they can never be too careful with this unpredictable animal. What this lion does not realize is that she is being stalked, not by an enemy, for lions have very few, but by a love-struck young male out to prove his manliness. She chases him off with a swift smack to the head, frightening the zebra once again. A blow like that can kill most animals. Having taught him a lesson, she returns to her drinking, ignoring him completely. The young male, in turn, has no intention of hanging around, taking the chance of receiving another vicious blow. So bitterly disappointed, he saunters off to join the rest of the pride. Here, at least, he is sure of being well received, as he is an integral part of the social structure of the pride. Physical contact between pride members is very important, especially for the young cubs, as this forms part of their education. It is through this that they learn the art of hunting and how to defend themselves. Romping and playing together, they create mock hunts and fights which will help as they grow older and at the same time establish them as valuable members of the pride.